I just think like it's such a beautiful thing um, to be a part of something that yeah, you like you just grow up here. Um, starting at like whatever it was, nineteen, twenty years old, however I was. So it's like it's such a beautiful thing to just to grow up, learn stuff together, go through life. Um, there's just so much to it. It's really a blessing to be here. This podcast is a delight and an honor. It's also one filled with sadness and meaning as we say goodbye to the playing career of a great American. After 122 appearances for the United States, nine seasons in NWSL, and after almost a decade of wearing the single most iconic American headband <laughs> since Bruce Springsteen, born in a USA tour, this week, when the United States face South Africa, will pay witness to the final competitive football match for a true legend of the American game who's represented the United States in three World Cups, won two World Champion Tchotchkes in the process, two-time US Soccer Female Player of the Year, an inimitable clench fist of a player, a pillous mix of aggression and intelligence, a style that once led her own mother to warn that she'll put a hurt on you. Live from Cincinnati, it's a joy to welcome back the Velvet Hammer. Juliet. Thank you. I feel like the intros always make me blush. <laughs> no one deserves them more. Really, really, really. We are just two days away from your final game with the US women's national team, Juliet. Thursday night against South Africa. Can you describe how you're feeling emotionally? Um, I feel like bittersweet. I think, you know, my initial decision being the right decision for me, I think that week was like, really emotional and I'm sure I'll have the emotion um come and go but I'm really filled with just so much joy and gratitude and just being here like obviously this year was just so crazy wild for me and a huge blessing um but I'm I'm definitely looking forward and I'm just unbelievably honored to be able to to have that game to kind of close close this chapter I, w- I want to start at the very first chapter, back in your hometown of Mesa, Arizona, you started playing soccer when you were just four years old, pulling on a pair of shin guards, trying to keep up with your older sister, Melanie. But you were so quickly captivated, dedicating yourself to the sport of football at an age when most kids can't even pick a favorite member of Paw Patrol. <laughs> you know, when you're in elementary school, one of your teachers gave you a piece of paper. I love this story telling you who to write who you were as your identity. And you just wrote soccer player. And I always thought, Julie, what was it about this sport that we love? But you went so completely all in at such a young age. I just think every word that you can possibly use for this sport can be used because there's so much joy, so much sadness, so much passion, so much drive, so much like I could just keep going. And I think for my life to use soccer to pave the way for me to learn life lessons and the people that have come in my life and to have it be used by something that can unite the world. Like just what soccer does globally is such a beautiful thing and a gift that I think, you know, sometimes we just like are so in it or so passionate about our team, but we're all human at the end of the day. And I'm just so grateful to be, to have soccer that just allowed me these opportunities that I would never imagine having. Like even just, at that point, we didn't really have a women's league here. So I, my goal was, I just want to go to college. Like, can I please just be able to get to college and have a scholarship? And then let alone to be able to have a dream that I've had in this career. So I feel like my reflection of just my 12 years or 11 years, whatever it's been, is just remarkable. You thrived in club soccer, captaining the then mighty Sereno Soccer Club to an incredible nine state titles, making a strong case you should replace the Saguaro Cactus on the Arizona State Quarter. Your youth coach, Gene Warren, has said that you were beyond your teammates when it came to talent and ambition. And you've told the story that when you were 13, your parents asked you, is this sport all you want to do? And you said, this is your quote, I didn't grow up with a ton of money. Club soccer was expensive. They wanted to be sure that this was what I was focused on. And I was like, soccer was my everything. 
what was it to you? I'm really fascinated at that time. As you say, there wasn't a pro game. What were you thinking of where it could take you for real at that time? I wasn't. And I think that's the beauty of me falling in love with the sport. It was just my day-to-day -day outlet. Like, it was just something that I could, like, cultivate. Like, I could be strong and tough, but finesse and a and try to be cute and like all these like things that seem like oxymorons in this sport like it was just me like I just it was something that I found that I was like this is this was for me like this was created for me like and I found my you know my closest friends still now so it's like it was really an avenue for me to just be the best that I could be and I and I want to just say soccer but off the field too like I was so blessed who's come in my life to mold me in every aspect of my life. You played, so essentially it was just the purest expression of you, Julie Johnston at that age. That's where you just felt most alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was funny. I felt like I had like two separate lives because I didn't play high school. Like I had, a, I played club, but I didn't play in school. So it was like, I had my, like I would go to school, but then I would like go and do soccer. And it was like, I felt like I had like two separate, like, which was amazing because it was like, I almost felt like I would be like, turn into something else like it was like it was it's funny like looking back on it because like yeah i mean people would be like oh yeah she's like gone for soccer but i don't think they understood like my my love for it like i'd be at school so i could like graduate but i was just like i really want to be out on the field basically saying that you were gone for soccer it's like saying batman's just casually out defending Gotham. <laughs> i mean you were doing work and you played soccer at santa clara the same california school that introduced d1 defenders to former u.s players brandy chastain and ali wagner and while you're in college you captained the team that won the under 20 women's world cup an unassailable reason for missing an econ class um but in 2012 just after your under-20 win, a really remarkable moment was caught on video when you met then U.S. team captain Christy Rampone, and she told you, don't doubt yourself. You'll be here with the national team, and I'll be watching. And it, that did come true, spoiler alert, quite literally, viewers. But take us inside your head. You were 20 year old. How did it feel to hear that from such a legend? Did it change the way you felt about yourself, how you felt about your football? I think it allowed me to dream for sure. I think um, being so young, it's like funny now. I'm like, what would I tell younger players? I feel like that's a common thing because it goes so fast. Like I think one of the like hardest parts about this all, and it, you sacrifice so much time, but then time goes so fast. It's like, I, I, I mean, time, man, I hate it and I love it because it's like, you want to know what you know now. I'm like, oh, if I was 18 now, imagine, but like, that's not why you, you know, go through all this stuff and adversity is so that you do grow up and but yeah I just yeah it's just, it's so fun it like it's this whole week clearly has been like a huge reflection like when I'm on the field I feel like I'm standing on the field for like after practice I'm on the field for like an extra 40 minutes just talking to people out of just memories savoring every single second and in February 2013 you made that prediction come true. You made your debut for the national team, came in for the indomitable Becky Sauerbrunn in the 83rd minute in a 4-1 win against Scotland. You admitted at the time that you were quite, quote, googly-eyed over some of your new teammates, players like Abby Wombach and Shannon Box. And I remember watching you charge on that day, so clearly proud to wear the US crest for the first time. But what do you remember about that match, those minutes on the pitch? Is, is there a single memory which stands out for you? Yeah, I think I touched the ball one time, and I think it shot off my shin for a corner. So it's pretty <laughs> memorable. <laughs> I've made it. I've done it. I'm here. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it was absolutely a joy. I, I was so nervous. Like, I think my like my teeth were, like, shivering or whatever the, the saying is. But... I love that. I just love, by the way, that notion of you work so hard, you sacrifice so much, you have a dream, you make that dream come real, and then the ball hits your shin and bubbles out for a corner. Even in achieving your dreams, they don't always come off as you imagine. And a few months later, then coach Jill Ellis was putting together the roster for qualifying games for the 2015 World Cup. You weren't originally part of the squad only sneaking onto the team after an injury to Crystal Dunn. And the initial snub you described in your own words as, quote, one of the hardest moments of my life. You know, these moments of failure, 
but ultimately your ferocious responses ultimately define you julie i think it was carly lloyd who invited you to start training with her and her coach james galantis in new jersey and he said you seem like a player who was quote waiting for her chance not really going after it did that period of challenge change something in you mentally or physically did it make you reevaluate your approach? Because you emerged from this time. The transition was like watching Diana Prince change into Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it, yes, it was very tough. I remember at the time and just like really hard to swallow, but it was more hard to swallow because I knew I didn't deserve it. Like I think using deserving is really hard because it's, I, I didn't, like I, I wasn't the, one of the best 23 to make it and I knew that. So it wasn't like I was like over here like, oh, I got snubbed or anything like that. It just, I was so disappointed in myself because I'm like, I know where I want to get. I'm not there. I I think I was the only player, like I got in by, you know, a toe or whatever, like barely. But I, and I was so grateful for that. But I was the only one, I think, the whole tournament that didn't even get a minute. And rightfully so. Like, I'm not, you know, it's not, wasn't poor me. But I was so disappointed in myself that obviously it turned, like, complete 180 of, like, how I was going to just approach my career. Um, Which was how, Julie? It was just everything else. Like, not that I was making excuses, but I just was like, I'm going to do that and some. Like, I just was like okay, clearly what I'm doing is, is good to be here, but I need to be great. So it was like, oh, I'm going to do 15 runs. Okay, I'm going to be doing 30 runs. Like, I was also so beyond honored to be able to train with Carly too, just to have kind of that partner guidance and just connect with somebody that has, you know, gone through her fair share of adversity. And yeah, I was in a new phase in my life. Like, you know, you're out of college and like just figuring out life who you are and so yeah it, it came to be great but I just have learned in times of adversity is when all the lessons all the blessings all the character comes and you learn that when you're you know 30 plus but when you're when you're in the thick of it it's like this sucks I want to get out <laughs> get me out of here <laughs> and that work did pay off because ultimately 2015 World Cup you started every game, you played every minute for the United States team that ended up winning. And just four years after you'd watched the 2011 tournament with your mum and your dog, um, there you were winning the whole bloody enchilada. And you once said, once you pick your dream, you have to sacrifice to get there. At that final whistle, when the US had won against Japan, when you caught your breath, when you realized that you were Julia Ertz world champion, Take us through the next 60 seconds in your head. What are you seeing? What are you feeling? Who are you hugging? How does that all go down? From from my memory, I think I just like collapsed because I was so tired. Um, but also just the way the game was. I mean, we were up 3-0, I think, in like a crazy amount of time. And But it felt like even from warm-ups, like I remember being in warm-up and being like almost a little bit fearful because I was like this warm-up is so good like we're <laughs> we're so good <laughs> like literally like it just like everything clicked like every pass that somebody made regardless if it was in the starting 11 all the way up into the 23 like I mean it was just flawless and we all felt good we were all on the same page and just the three by the third goal we were like all oh, right like this is crazy but like we have to like obviously adjust and so when it when the whistle blew just because of the way the craziness was, I was like, oh my gosh, like that was incredible. And so I think I hugged the back line first from what I remember. And I, I wasn't teary eyed later until I like walked up and hugged. I think I have a photo of it with Sid LaRue because it was just, people don't understand what, like you see the, the product, but all the stuff behind the scenes. And like, I grew up here, like these people know so much of my life. Whoa. <laughs> So it's like your family. And so like, I, I just remember hugging Sid and was just like, clearly waterworks because it's like, I've also known Sid since I was like 12. So it's just like, yeah, it's like your life. We did this, we did this. And in those moments, Julie, do you think about the joy or do you think about the shared sacrifice? Yeah, I mean, you think about everything. I mean, even just being here is just a joy. I didn't even, Obviously, you go back and forth. You're like, okay, like, 
you make the decision to be done and um which is so beautiful in itself like I'm, I'm obviously so excited to spend time with my family and be present and um I just think like it's such a beautiful thing um to be a part of something that yeah you like you just grow up here um starting at like whatever it was 19 20 years old however I was so it's like it's such a beautiful thing to just to grow up learn stuff together go through life um there's just so much to it it's really a blessing to be here and I think any you know I've talked to a lot of veterans who's also stepped away and gone through their processing of just being away from it which is obviously difficult but it's it's coming you know you don't you can't do this forever so but it's very cool who's been who's been helpful and what they told you um i well it's over the years i mean i feel like multiple people but i feel like um just recently reaching out you know i, I talked to carly a bunch and um lauren holiday as well and she she was in la when i was there and it's just it's a beautiful connection that you have i think sport connects people incredibly you know what i mean just between the fans the community and all that as well but there's something about your teammates that they're just like your ride or die they get it like the stuff you go through the off the field the banter the the trash talks like there's just this like beauty that especially this crest like bonds together um and that's even from age and you know all that it's just at the end of the day nobody really understands it until you're like in it and so i think that's what it like obviously i'm so happy i can smile and laugh about it and i just cry because it's just like wow what a beautiful story like i've been able to have for such a long time um so i think that's where like the emotion comes from like i i am very excited and i love this sport so much but i think it's just also emotional being back you you also experienced the triumph of the 2019 world cup only another star above the crest another victory parade and julie when you do reflect on your career what's the single achievement that you're most proud of you know um I, this sounds funny. I would say the wins, but I only say that not because obviously everybody, you want to win every game, but I think because the determination going into every game that I've had alongside my teammates was to leave nothing behind. That every time you left the pitch, you, you step off being like, I left everything that I had that day that I possibly could to, to get to that win. And I think that just grit and just fundamental drive that has just been in, like embedded with me with just the the older girls that have you know taught that passed that down all of that like that is what I'm like I feel like the most proud of of just yes obviously tallies as a dub a win but like just doing all that extra stuff like all the like no excuses like I'm gonna make every tackle I'm going to do my job to the absolute fullest. Like it's that kind of stuff that like I love. Like I love the like dirty details of like just getting a win. Is there a single moment on the pitch from your career which you would choose to relive if you could? Um, I like standing on the podium with uh, trophies. <laughs> I would have loved to do that this summer. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Oh, God bless you. When you last came on, talking of that, I mean, you told us that the home screen of your phone in the run-up to the World Cup was a photograph of you in agony after missing a shot on goal during the 2020 Olympics campaign. And you had that photo of that disappointment as a motivational device. Um, that agony has just been reopened by the World Cup experience. And I do know you love to win. You know, you, pretty much more than anyone I've interviewed, you also hate to lose um, when you think about what you relive the most in your mind, is it the wins, the joys, the highs, or is it the almost and the not quite when you fell short, or are they all intertwined in your mind? I think it's intertwined because I wouldn't have had any of those without the lows. You know, it's like you don't have a high without a low, basically. And like, I think if you just stayed, you know, the same all the time, then it kind of just gets boring. And like, Obviously, it's hard when you're in the low for sure, but like at the end of the day, and you get this when you get older, it's a sport and it's a freaking beautiful sport. I think it's the best sport in the world. 
and you get to do that for a living. There's so much outside stuff. Like, there is. Like, there's, you know, whatever going on. And you, you have life stuff. Like, you know, life is hard. Like, it is. But it's so beautiful. And just being able to do this sport for so long and being able to do it for my job. Like, it was awesome. Like, it is awesome. So, it is awesome. And we're going to talk about the decision to retire from this game, this game that you love so much, the game you've always loved, Julie, from pretty much the first time you kicked a ball. You just made an incredible comeback to the sport. Um, we talked last time about really quite the grueling regimen that you push yourself through to get match fit for the World Cup um, and throwing yourself into tackles after the birth of your son, Madden. You know, you were away from the game for over 600 days. Was there a time when you were at home with your little lad when you did think about hanging your boots up for good? Um, having Madden, I, I didn't know. I think I just, I, I didn't know how my body was going to be. I think I understood my logistics. I, um, it, my life is very unique in the sense of having two professional athletes um, playing so it makes our just logistics different um, and I also just never like everyone tells you like oh when you have a kid like you know the the joys and emotion of and all that and it was just so emotional like that whole process and it was so I love being a mom I love it so much and so yes I wouldn't say there wasn't like in a doubt of my mind like how how am I even going to make this work like I've had I had really long conversations with Flacco of like I don't think I can make this work I, I don't live in a zip code that allows me to be in an NWSL team. I don't have like, you know, there there's this, this sport takes sacrifice and I've known that these girls are sacrificing, you know, and we talked about it before time is a huge thing of that. And then once you have your son and, and my family, it just was like, Whoa, like, I don't know if I can commit being away, you know, and, and also missing monumental time like to see my son for me personally in my in my life where I where I'm at so yeah it, it's it was an emotional decision for sure um but the right one I've, I've learned that like sadness and joy can just live simultaneously harmoniously or whatever like I'm I'm you know stepping away from something that I know sometimes can be a little scary but my alternative is to be the best mom that I can and be there and be there with my family I mean, ultimately, you're evaluating two things that you love so deeply, so profoundly. You made the decision to go back into the game. Sitting here today, just 45 days after the heartbreaking exit from the World Cup, just that millimeter, that fifth penalty taker of Sweden. You know, this is a clumsy question, but if you've known how the tournament was going to go, was it worth it? Yes. I, Yes. Um, this year alone, I think has, <clears throat> I, I feel like allows me to step away with clarity, I think. And I think being an athlete, being able to choose when you step away yourself is like what every athlete dreams of that you're make the decision that, you know what, like this, this is the time to hang up the boots. Um, and obviously I would love uh, to win like anybody that is there. Um, but just the journey of getting back, the sharing moments with my son, the learning more about myself. Um, and I completely changed as like a human, as a mom, like in, in so many aspects. So I was this six, eight months or whatever it's been, I think is why I can step away with so much joy because I re fell in love with the game in like the views almost from my son, like, you know, maybe, maybe he'll love it one day too, who knows. But I just, it was just so much joy to go to practice and love it so much to, and then go back and be with my son and love it so much. Like it was such a cool thing. Like, yes, yes, I would do that. Well, I wouldn't do this a thousand times, which is why I'm stepping away. But, but yes, like there's nothing that I, regret and and that was our whole my husband and I talk about it all the time regardless of our whole careers we just don't want to regret anything and like it was just so crazy like I'm like what is this eight months like sometimes like I got home off after being in New Zealand and was like 
what just happened? Like, like literally, I was like, what did I just do? Like, I just, like, I'd no, I, I would just take my son on walks and be like, I, what, what is this blessing that I just had? In, in what way, Julie? So I understand, like, when you were back, it, did that life just feel so real that it felt like you weren't just facing down all comers in World Cup play representing our nation? Or was it just this gift that you'd have after uh, giving birth to Madden? Yeah, it was just, you know, I, I go through this enormous change, you know, first time mom. Um, like, I, I'm over here thinking that I'm done playing after having him. I, I, you know, by December, January was like, I clearly can't do this. Like, I, you know, I was, you know, my husband also got injured last year. I'm trying to, nav we're trying to navigate, like, what are, like, how do we make, you know, X, Y, and Z work? And so I'm over here thinking I'm done and... U.S. soccer is like, how do we support you? Like, how do we, like, how, and I'm over here thinking I'm done. Like, there's no way I can make this happen. And the beauty that had stepped up in this time, people that came in my life at the time they did, Angel City being like, we're not sure what this looks like, but we see you're dreaming. And we don't know, you know, we don't, we just want to see if we can help which is like a dream for somebody being like, you know, what, what am I doing? Like I, and so that, that's why I'm like, what just happened is because I just, and my husband and I were trying, we just try to figure it out on the fly. Like we don't live in the zip code. Like we live in another state. I'm, I'm trying to play. I would take the baby, drop him off, fly, fly in to go play, fly back home. And like, yeah. just for the, dream opportunity to just fall in love with the sport again and just do life like i i don't know and just the support of my teammates and i don't know i just fell in love with the game again julie you doing life is like wow that's at an 11 um but and immediately after the match with with a bench coat zipped over your kit you you, you delivered a intensely emotional interview you told a reporter, it's probably my last game, being able to have the honor to wear this crest. You know, had you talked through that decision with anyone else on the squad? Were, were your teammates prepared for this moment? No, I don't even think I was prepared for that moment. <laughs> I, I, to be honest, like, I think, like, obviously I was doing this all and just, I think, didn't really understand, I think, the... Like, obviously, I knew what a big game is. I know what knockout games are. And I think after was just like, oh, my gosh, like, <clears throat> the craziness of the just the ending, obviously. And, um, yeah, I just, I think after, I just realized, like, the next big tournament, obviously, is, is the Olympics coming up. And I think it was just in this small amount of time I, you know, you go out and I'm with my family and seeing them. And I think like in that small time between reflecting of like the whistle blows off of that crazy last PK and I'm walking over to my family holding my son and I'm just like, whoa, like, so then, yeah, I wasn't prepared for it. I think it was just like the, like that 30 minutes from until I got there was just like the reality kind of like, I think set in for me. Angel City interim coach Becky Tweed said Julie isn't, quote, crazily at peace with her decision to retire. How did it feel to, 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 to get those words out? Was it agonizing or was it freeing? I'm. That is a great question. I think at the time, I think it was just a process. Like when you say it, because you just never, you never dream of the day. You're like, obviously you're like, okay, I don't want to have any regrets my whole career. Like, I've done farewell games with, you know, legends and it's an honor to have those. But I just, in my mindset, I was like, oh, you know, I probably won't have one of those. Like, I just never thought that I would have the honor to have a farewell game. And then like, yeah, I just, I think telling the girls was the hardest part for me because it was just like all this craziness and all the support that they have given me to, to fall in love and things. And I think just as time went on the clarity of like the sacrifice, you know, you just like, until like you're a mom and for, for just me, like how I, how I am. And I just, it just was tough to go through, but it's just funny. It's just such a weird thing. It's just like, I'm, I'm so joyful to be with my family and still on the next trip, but it's still there. Like it just, it's been part of my life the whole time. So 
it wasn't like a it just is hard to say bye i guess is what i'm trying to say you also said and i love this that we just rent these jerseys before passing them on to the next generation and despite the end to the tournament which went as no one wanted it to go and that changing balance of power that it represents you know, women's football no longer has one sole american superpower what positives do you see in the american game from your unique perspective that give you hope that you're leaving that quote rented jersey in great hands well multiple reasons i think the idea of one we have a lot of young players that are just tremendous and i think setbacks allow for huge comebacks um i mean we did not do well in the Olympics of 2016, came back and won in 2019. So I've been in that disappointment to joy moment. So I think knowing that, knowing the commitment um, that the girls have to, to get back. And, you know, I think a re reality check of just like, okay, like it's go time. Not that it, we didn't have that before, but we have such great young talent so it's just now putting out a product that wins games. Julie, there are young women out there who put on a Tiffany blue headband <laughs> before each game, who wear their Ertz jerseys in the stands, model a game um, after yours. You know, I believe in the, in the pictures of Gilbert, Arizona, there's, there's coaches who teach a move inspired by you, one that's called the Jewels. I don't know if you actually know what know that, that is, but I'd love to know. I would love to, to know what that is. If anyone knows what the jewels is, please email us because I'm dying to add that to my repertoire. But have you thought about how you'd like to be remembered? What you hope your teammates will say about the time they spent sharing the field with you? Um, I think, obviously, like a tenacious defender, like aggressive. Like I think all those things are great, but I think from the beginning I wanted to stand out of somebody who could read the game, had a so high soccer IQ. I think I wanted that to be known that like, yeah, like I just think there's so much into that, that that showed my commitment to the sport and the growth of the sport. Um, everything else is great. I would, I, I hope, you know, a near, near post set piece runner, uh, <laughs> a, a good tackler, um, I, I wanted to be the best 1v1 defender ever. Like, I remember going into my first camp and be like, I want to be the best one one-on-one -on -one defender ever. But I really just think that, and I think, obviously, when you leave and you reflect on stuff, I hope a good teammate at the end of the day, too. God, I, I was watching this World Cup with Becky Sauerbrun, and um, um, she would say um, whenever she could, whenever there was a corner, she'd always be like, oh, my God. Julie can just head it from the most acute angles. You just <laughs> knew it was going to be a goal just by the corner before it even hit her head. But on Thursday night in Cincinnati, when you walk out onto the field for the last time, how do you expect to feel? Is there, is there something you'll focus on, a sound, a feeling, the, the synthetic-y smell of the turf that you'll save? Um, yeah, I hope slow. Like, I hope it just, I can soak it on in. So I hope, I hope the day goes by slow. But um yeah, knowing me, probably emotional, like no surprise, I'm sure my teammates would say that. Um, but I also just hope just unbelievable amount of joy. I hope that I can just like thoroughly enjoy it because I'm just so blessed to have these girls um, to play one last time to um, and to be there with my family. Like, I think you just reflect on everything between my parents driving me to practice and sacrificing so much of their time and um you know money and all that stuff that comes into it so um i'm really excited to be able to just use this moment to, ch to close a chapter because it's so much bigger than than me obviously it's everyone who's been a part of it so i'm excited when, when you close your eyes and think about it what do you think you'll miss the most is it is it the competition the, the pre-game camaraderie winning yeah i mean competing i think i love like I love competing. I love them, like, and some of my favorite, and I love game day, don't get me wrong, but I we've had some trainings that no one's seen where it's just like a battle, like 5v5 tournaments. We're all screaming at each other that, like, the ball is out of bounds. Like, 
just what the sport is supposed to be. Just fun. I'm just going to miss having fun on the field. Who was the greatest opponent for you in those trainings? Just the greatest adversary who'd bring that battle, that war? I mean, a ton. I feel like if I, top of mind, like, obviously Carly. Kelly is so funny. Like, just Kelly screaming Hart. all the time. Um, Ali Krieger was hysterical. Like, gosh, I mean, I could go on and on. Cheney, obviously, like, just, like... I forgot what they gave her as her nickname when she would go wild. It was hysterical. Like, <laughs> and he, like I could just go off with everybody. Like, Lindsay's is fun, too. Lindsay and I would get in these crazy tackles, like two big girls, just freaking, we, we would get up and be like, are you broken? Because I'm not broken. Like, it's that stuff. It's the fun that the sport is supposed to be played in. Oh, Lindsay Haran. <laughs> she would break lesson walls for sure. Yeah. You fell in love with the game at the age of four. What would you say to four-year-old Julie Johnston if you could go back in time, her pulling on her tiny shin pads, loving the game that you know so well 27 years on, two-time World Cup winner, retiring as a giant of the game. What's the most important lesson that you would tell her that you've learned along this journey? I think I would say don't let anyone or anything take the joy and love of the game away. And I also would think to say just when adversity hits, dig in, lean on your faith, and just come out better on the other side. <laughs> and never do interviews for some bull dude. But Julie, <laughs> last question. <laughs> you, you've said that you've made your answers up in life whenever someone asks, and they always do. What would you be if you weren't a soccer player? You just fabricate stuff because you could never imagine a life just a, a, an alternative pathway to not playing this game. But right now, what do you hope to be? What do you hope to do after this chapter closes? Julie Ertz, elite football player. Oh, a mom. Oh, it's the best. Like, I love it so much. And you know what? I think obviously that that's an obvious one for me. And um, But also I'm hoping that, you know, just reflecting, being able to make an impact in the soccer world. Um, and I hope I can continue to make an impact off the field. Um, you know, just with our foundation and stuff, I'm just really excited to be able to be even more hands-on with that um, and just learn where I can help in my community. So, yeah, a lot of, you know, changes, and I, I want to find new hobbies and do, you know, new things. And, you know, I'm a little nervous about, what's, like, what's – next but it's all exciting and I, I i have an opportunity to to be the best mom that i can um and i take that job very seriously what hobbies have you contemplated i'm well right now pickleball but <laughs> but i'm hoping more like i said i was like well i'm hoping that there's more to come because um, oh my god I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Feel like that I'm not sure you realize that my my soccer was taking 24 uh, seven of, of my life, but uh, no, I so so much. I'm I'm not quite sure um, what my path takes me, but I'm just excited for the for the journey. Just realized, Juliet, this time next year I'll be interviewing you after you just locked up your first pickleball world championship, um, of which there will probably be many more. I do want to say to you. Julie, there have been few players I have adored more in a U.S. jersey than you. And I know that I'm not alone. That The way you played with passion, total commitment, every single moment you were on the field, just an approach to football, honestly, an approach to life that many of us aspire to. So on behalf of all of our GFOPs, I just want to thank you for every single moment. Raise my pint to you, to your family, to your son. Wish you Godspeed. Thank you.